No, it doesn't count anymore. Are we live? Not yet. It's all I did it like Stuart said. Which one? I had to call It's doing a little circle thing in the middle of the screen now. Yes, that's how I So, sorry everybody. We're just still working out all the glitches of the timing. I'd like to welcome everyone to our first podcast. Tonight we're going to be talking about tarot talks. Um, can you mute it? Okay. Sorry, that was distracting. Yeah. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about tarot cards, all things tarot. We're going to cover everything from what tarot cards are, how to use them, and make everything all the way to maintenance. Um, this talk is going to be mostly covered by Carrie. She is more familiar with tarot cards. I personally use my runestones more often, but I do have some experience, and I'll be making sure to ask her plenty of questions for you guys. And don't forget, guys, you can always chip in. This is live. You can call 396-7463, or you can comment and just even say hello and let us know that you're there and watching. So, I... Oh, Ashley has a question. There's also... Um, a 10 to 20 second delay in the video. So, right. Stuart can explain that right. that's all I know. Um, for anyone who is interested in asking questions live through Facebook, we would like to point out that there is about a 15 to 20 second delay in whatever we are saying as opposed to what you are seeing. So if you do ask a question, we will just have a short delay before we're able to address it. All right, okay. so I guess we should begin. Maybe start mm -hmm. with... Um, the history of tarot. So the origins of tarot were rather murky, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of different beliefs on where and when exactly they started. And there's there's actually a lot of different culture mm -hmm. in tarot. To what we know today is definitely not what it started out as. So um, in the earliest decks, Egyptian, Buddhist, Su Sufi, Hebrew, and Christian. Those are kind of all the different uh, cultures and ethnicities involved mm -hmm. in the beginnings of tarot. And uh, the tarot deck that we have today is mm -hmm. made up of 78 cards. Uh, there is the major arcana and the minor arcana. And the major has 22 cards. They represent more of the spiritual aspect, the self-awareness, emotional plagues, and life journey. Mm -hmm. Your minor arcana has 56 cards. I know a lot of people already heard this many times from me. Um, your playing cards basically come from the minor arcana of the tarot deck. There's 52 in the deck, as we all know, from playing 52 yes. pickup. But in the tarot, there's 54. You have an additional page and night. Mm -hmm. And that's where the four extra cards come from. <clears throat> so uh, you can actually read cards with a playing deck of cards. Mm -hmm. And we have fun little decks like this which is just a major arcana and it translates hearts is cups mm -hmm. spades is swords clubs is wands and diamonds are the pentacles so the earliest documentation of tarot cards it shows in northern italy mm -hmm. around 1420 to 1440 this deck was just the major uh, major arcana and it started as a game um, there's rare indication that early on in both tarot and that both tarot and playing cards were used for divi uh, sorry, divination. Uh, in uh, documentation by a Franciscan friar, and uh, he believed that the major arcana was invented by the devil. And then tarot had a rebirth in 1781 in France. <clears throat> a man named Antoine Court de Gablin. He was convinced they originated in Egypt, and he believes they held secrets that only certain people could uh, interpret and understand. Mm -hmm. The occult, the tarot, is a relatively new form from this, and it's not the, <coughs> not the only way to approach cards. Practices were not widely known until this time. So that's in the 17, late 1700s, that's when tarot really started yes. to spread and take off. Yeah, most modern day tarot designs are from within the last 200 years, if they I are. correctly. They are. Yeah. Yes? Um, I think we have someone watching the video. It just came up on the screen. Jacqueline's watching it, I think. Hey, Jacqueline! How's she watching? How's she watching? 
about. So in the 19th century, a famous occultist, Aphelius Levi, mm -hmm. he developed a correlation between tarot and Kabbalah, Hebrew mysticism. And this started a new belief that tarot originated in Israel. So um, this theory also brought all 78 cards together. Um, Arthur Edward Waite is credited with the renaissance of tarot in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Every hundred years it just brings a resurgence. Mm -hmm. And he along with am artist Pamela Coleman, um, they created the rectified tarot. And the Waite version is accepted as the standard deck. Yeah. But we can diverge from that because there's so many different decks. There are. So many. You have oracle cards. Mm -hmm. You have the minor arcana cards. Angel cards. Angel fairy cards. cards fairies, aura cards. Daily cards. cards spirit um, cards. These, uh, easy tarot, these are cards that have no negative interpretation. So mm -hmm. all you get is a positive reading, just like oracle cards. We should also point that out. Oracle cards basically only give a positive mm -hmm. interpretation. Yes, Amber, you have a question. I have mermaid oracle cards. You have mermaid? Oh, cool. There's so many different kinds of oracle cards, and people just go for what they really feel connected to, mm -hmm. which does bring me to my another section. Mm -hmm. Choosing your cards. Yeah. This is a huge decision. The connection that you build with your cards is going to really let you see or not see. Like, it's it's really, and you know from your rooms, it's yeah. really important choosing your medium. Yeah. As I was mentioning, I used to use tarot cards for a little bit, and I've tried using fairy cards before, but one I never really connected that much with the tarot cards or the fairy cards. And another part of it, too, is you, would you find that... The design of the cards themselves also have a big oh, influence. Here. Yeah. Well, I've never really enjoyed here because I find that a lot of the decks that you find nowadays, the cards are very large and it makes it hard to shuffle. It does. And that's, that's my one biggest of the, complaint. Yeah, that's one of the biggest um, turnoffs that I've had for using tarot cards recently. And actually, I just, I get it. A lot of people that come into me for readings. That's their biggest complaint. They're like, your cards are so huge, I can't shuffle them. Mm -hmm. So, And I tell everybody, there's even bigger cards than the ones I use. So I'm just going to show these off so people do understand there are bigger cards. Yeah. This is a beautiful deck. This deck, mostly, I would use it as kind of like a gift set, more of like a show-off set, yeah. like a treasure set, instead of a practical reading, because... Mm -hmm. I can't shuffle these. Like this is yeah. this is my hand. These are the cards. Yeah. There's no way I'm getting my hands around those. So, just I just told you there's bigger cards. When I was when I first got the fairy oracle cards that I had, the or the ones that were advertised on the box looked a lot smaller than what I was expecting, and they looked like they would be a decent size for play or using for divination for shuffling. But I took them out of the box, and they were almost the size of a small book. And I just tried shuffling them, and I they were just going everywhere, and it just wasn't even just from the start of an enjoyable experience. Yeah, I get that. I understand. And that's kind of the reason why the Gypsy Witch, the pocket size ones, they everybody's used to stand on for it, shoveling a standard size deck. You know what I mean? But it, the connection is important. How yeah. it appears to you, how mm -hmm. it appeals to you. The symbolism, the, symbolism, the, design. the design, and mostly how they feel when you hold them. Mm -hmm. I am the idiot that when I am choosing my cards, I am standing there I'm with my eyes closed, and I'm like, hey, are you my cards? Like, do you feel right for me? Mm -hmm. Do I feel a connection with you? And I have bought wrong cards before. And they were just awkward. They just didn't feel mm -hmm. comfortable at all. And not like in the size, it just yeah. didn't feel comfortable to me. In the case of buying a deck or receiving a deck, even if someone to give you a deck of cards that didn't feel right for you, do you have any suggestions or recommendations for what you can do with those cards? What I would do is I would offer them as a gift to the person who felt the connection to them. Okay. Because obviously if I'm meant to be with them. Okay. And, then, and it is tricky. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I truthfully don't like giving cards as a gift because if you don't have that right connection, then I'd rather just... give a gift certificate yeah. and let someone choose their own. Yeah. But if you had some that didn't feel right, but if, if the person who gave them to you had significance to you, you wouldn't want to hurt their feelings, you could use them as a show deck. Some mm -hmm. people just collect them for the artwork. 
-hmm. The artwork is beautiful on them. They are. So, to get back to choosing your cards, as I said, feel a connection. Have them be cards that you're drawn to. Just listen, you know, and you'll know if they're yours. Um, so, beginning, uh, I suggest handling them, playing with them, shuffling them, holding them, carrying. build that, carrying them, build that fondness with them, that connection, mm. that relationship. Because yes. They're, they tell you a lot, so you need to have a good connection. Even if it's just carrying them in your purse, it still helps you build a connection. Exactly. Or sleeping with them by your bed or something. Exactly. I was about to mention that um, something that I've heard that people will commonly do with divination tools, ranging from tarot cards all the way to pendulums, is sleeping with them under your pillow. Would you recommend something like that? If you were comfortable enough with it. Yeah. Everybody's different, everybody connects differently, and everybody responds mm -hmm. differently. So, just go with what feels right for you. That's okay. the biggest thing in any of this. Your layout, uh, the practice you use, just go with what feels right for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I suggest practice on yourself. I find, personally, I did start with practicing on me. I was like my biggest um, read, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to build a connection with it. But I find, personally, when I try to read me, I either see what I really, really, really want to see, or I see what I really, really, really am afraid to see. Yes. I find it's better to have someone else read me than to do my own cards. But at first, it was a way for me to connect with my cards. So mm -hmm. I, I totally recommend starting with yourself, just so you get that connection. And then read your friends, read your family, anybody who wants to or will let you. And that you love enough, of course, to read. Mm -hmm. Just so you can build that connection, you can start seeing what your cards are telling you. And um, the biggest thing, have an open heart and an open mind. That's the biggest thing of all. Just going back to the comment you said before, either seeing something that what you want to see or something that will scare you. Um, I've heard of a few instances of people that will use tarot cards and they'll see something that will scare them and then they'll not they'll stop using them. Do you have any recommendations or recommendations or suggestions to people who may have had that kind of experience on how to recover That's from it? Actually, happened to me more than once. One time it happened, it was a very close personal friend, mm -hmm. and I didn't even get to the reading. I just started shuffling, and since I've had my cards for over 20 years, I have a really strong connection with these cards, right? Mm -hmm. And um, my cards warned me. It boxed with a certain card, and uh, the strong feeling I got from it, and what the card is indicating is I don't want to see what's in this reading. I was petrified to see what's in this reading, so I looked at the person, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. But there's something there I just can't see. I'm not ready for it. And of course, that made the whole situation worse. And, mm -hmm. You know, I apologize for that. But um, I put down my cards for another years after that. Because, you know, it, it hit home. Yeah. It really hit home. I never got rid of them. I just put them away for a little bit until they weren't so frightening to me. And time to process, like... Sometimes this is going to happen. Sometimes you're going to see a thing that scares you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to throw them out. You don't need to give them away. Just give yourself time to process. The cards aren't being mean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They yes. can't help what's there. Yeah. So just give yourself time, okay. you know, and just, you know, have a little bit of faith okay. that things go the way they might go and you don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. So now we're going to touch on caring for your cards. Okay. There's several ways, of course, you don't want to get your cards wet, yeah. so running water is not a good method with your cards. Um, <clears throat> you care for them to clear negative energy, mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes there's not good things in the cards, and uh, you want to protect them from damage. You can carry them in a box or in a, a, a bag, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, you can keep them in a silk scarf, mm -hmm. and you can store them with quartz. Okay. Quartz is, you know, the mother's supreme gift. So, yes. um, you can store them with quartz after cleansing. Okay. Just one second. Yes, actually. Um, I don't know if mom said this or not, but you can also place them in the moonlight, like full moon. Yep. We're actually going to get to that now. Oh. No, There's still I'm lots of now. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> so, to purify your cards or cleanse your cards, you, um, sorry, you can shuffle them. Shuffle them a lot to activate them with your energy. Mm -hmm. You can meditate with them. Hold them in your hands. Close your eyes and just relax. Okay. My favorite, moon bath. Okay. My zodiac sign is cancer. So mm -hmm. I'm like totally moon called. 
And I, I, I loved, I put my crystals in the moon to cleanse it. I put my cards in the moonlight to cleanse them. You can do the same thing with the sun. Okay. You can cleanse them by the sun. You can give them a salt burial. Um, you keep them in a plastic bag, of course. And you put them in, coat them with salt, cover the bag with salt. Okay. And uh, put it in their tight container for a few days to a week. And you can just put them out in the fresh air on a nice sunny day. Just All put right. them outside, let the earth's energy cleanse the negativity away, and you can smudge them. Okay. Yes. Do you say you can put them in a bowl of rice too? Because I heard that works. Yep. Yeah, most tarot card readers that I know don't really use rice. That's mostly used for stones. Uh, no, I didn't know if you do that because I heard you can do it for stones. I just didn't know about yeah. cards. Yeah. And we do have a question over there. And don't let other people play with them. You don't want other people to play with them, but whenever you read people, I find most people, most readers, want the one they're reading to handle them, to kind of get yeah. that little bit of energy in mm -hmm. there so you can see them more clearly. But as a rule, you don't really want people playing with them. Like, my kids grew up, my, I never hid my cards from them. It was never a big secret, but they weren't allowed to play with them. When they wanted to look at them, we'd sit down and I'd show them the pictures. They really enjoyed seeing the pictures on them. Mm -hmm. And their big goal in life was uh, to read tarot cards. Well, no, <laughs> to have me read their cards. Mm. And they all ask me really young, and I personally don't feel comfortable reading kids. Mm -hmm. Kids have too much potential, too much energy, too much change. Like they're just developing in so many levels, right? Yeah. So I am not comfortable reading kids. Um, I will read kids' poems, but not their cards. Cause, you know, your poems not really the same kind of reading as mm -hmm. cards are. What actually? It says 24 of your views. Cool. <laughs> so, I forgot where I was. Oh, uh, we were just talking about kids. Yes. So, my deal with my kids is when they were 16, I would read your cards for your birthday. Okay. And that's what they really, really looked forward. And they all, all of them who wanted it got cards for their birthdays. So, bring it out in the open, no point in hiding it. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to cover some spreads? Okay. Do you think we should look into that a little bit? Sure. I haven't really figured out how we're going to do that. But can we take like a 10 second pause? Is that something we can do? No. We're live, so. So not really? No. Sorry for the interruptions, people. Um, these are my daughter's Ashley's oracle cards. I think pretty much every one of my girls has some sort of cards. And these are her oracle cards. So Stuart, you want to just talk to everybody for a minute? Okay. Um, I'm not really that familiar with tarot cards myself, but they are some that I've played with before, and like I mentioned, that's just something I never really connected with. The deck that I have, it's a deck that I really do enjoy, and that I do have a connection with, it's just the whole card aspect of itself is not is what I don't really feel that much of a connection to, but it is something I've been looking to get into. I recently got a new deck of cards that I feel a very good connection with, and I'm looking into starting that soon. So what would you, what are your thoughts on that, of having a deck that you used to connect with, but you don't connect with anymore? Do you have any recommendations for, like, would you keep that deck in case you want to connect with it again later on? Or? Does it have sentimental value to you? Yes. Then I would keep it. Um, just like, I'm trying to think how I want to explain this. Sometimes we grow past things. Mm -hmm. Like I had starter decks before I got this deck that I have now, and I'm sure someday this deck will not be in use. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It will kind of retire. Or um, I'll find another deck that I have more of a connection to. But if it has sentimental value, I would keep it. Okay. If it doesn't have sentimental value, maybe someone else has a connection to it. Okay. It doesn't hurt to pass it on. It doesn't hurt to keep it. It's it's true to whatever you feel. Okay. And all this stuff is just what you feel, you know what I mean? Yes. Like with your runes, mm -hmm. do you still keep de uh, stones that you don't use anymore? Um, in cases where I've had runes go missing, I had had instances before where I've kept a set because I did have a very good connection to it and they had sentimental values. 
but because runes can be used for things outside of nation, I've had given them before in the forms of amulets or talismans or something on the lines of a worry stone, that kind of thing before. But yeah, I've done the same things with runes, so it would make sense to do with tarot as well. Yeah. You know, they're, <clears throat> they all have a fairly similar purpose, and that's divination. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just go with what feels right to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to figure out how we can do this layout. If I put it on the floor, it'll be too low. We can get the whiteboard to sit in your back so we can see in there. No, it's not. It's now our it's a bulletin. <laughs> we can use it now. Can you lay it on the card that moves the camera? What? Lay it on the card that moves the camera? Yeah, I suppose that is something we could do. Lay it, yep. lay it out on the carpet and then show everybody the layout. Mm -hmm. So this is my favorite spread. Hmm. It's a 10 card spread. Okay. It's the Celtic spread. Okay. And um, for me, I, I shuffle, mm -hmm. right, while well, concentrating on the person that's in front of me. And uh, then I break, I get them to shuffle, and then I choose a signifying card of cards that represent them. Okay? Okay. And um, then I divide it into three piles, and I ask them to choose a pile that they want me to use for their reading. So start, maybe we move the camera now. Okay. I will lay out the cards. And Do you want to open up OBS so we can see the line? It's the other part that's open. Sorry, people, we're still working this out. This is all new to us. So is that the... Alright, so we're going to say that this is our signifying card. <clears throat> and then exactly this is there. the covering position. Okay. The crossing position, or sorry, above, below, behind, before, I can hold this. you, your home, your hopes, dreams, and fears, and the final outcome. So that is how the 10 card Celtic spread reads. Those are the positions of it. The other layout that we're going to talk about tonight is just, um, it's more of a, a daily spread mm -hmm. that gives you a specific question and answer, like, um, am I going to get the job or mm -hmm. how is my day going to be? So again, I use a signifying card, a crossing card, a behind you, and a before you. And those are pretty much two easy spreads that are a good place to start on okay. your tarot journey. Okay. <clears throat> Is that good there? I'm missing like one shoulder. Then I need a shoulder. I'm missing a little bit. So we don't know <coughs> if we're having any comments or anything like that. Do you think perhaps it's better for us to watch the live feed? Because we could be missing people interacting with us. There's no questions, and I was just kind of hoping people would pop on and say hello. Um, would you be able to get it on your phone? Because I really allow more There's time to watch it. Mm -hmm. There's ten comments. So somehow we're missing them. Okay. So I apologize for anyone who may have been having questions or sure trying to interact with us. Um, it is something that we are still currently working on figuring out ourselves. Anne Lawrence wants to know, Carrie, do you read more from cards than what's in the book? What comes to you yourself for the person you are reading? I'm sorry, Amber, I'm not quite processing what you're asking. Come on over here, say hello to everybody. Maybe have pull up a piece of carpet. Maybe just stand over Oh, I was there. thinking, get her on the screen, let everybody okay. see her, if get all the issues. Okay. We have five shares and 32 views. Okay. Anne Lawrence wants to know, if you can read more from the cards than what's in the book, what comes to you yourself for the person you are reading? Every happen? reading is actually different. Mostly, for me, and um, I lay out my cards, and I take a minute just to process what I see, but for me, mm -hmm. I get kind of like pictures, images, I get fragments mm -hmm. of sentences, I get feelings, and that's kind of how I put it all together with what I see. A big problem, Stuart, is sometimes what I see with my eyes in front of me confuses me. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes. With what I see inside. I, I know I'm not explaining mm -hmm. this really well at all, but if for cards, I go on my instinct, I go on my intuition, right? Mm -hmm. But if I focus on what's in front of me, like the other day, I had a person and they looked so young. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't crediting them because of how they appeared to me with the experience that was in their cards. And sometimes what you see is not what you see. Yeah. Do you, am I explaining that well? Yeah. Can you elaborate on it a bit more? Um, I'm not 100% sure how I can put it in the words because sometimes the cards might lead to something that a person may have hidden, if that makes sense. They do. Um, just what's in front of your eyes doesn't always match up with what's in the spread. Yeah. Sometimes you get people and there's so much tragedy in their life mm -hmm. and you tell they yourself... They don't present that way. Well, it's there in the cards, but you tell yourself something that bad can't be real. It can't touch someone yeah. that, that you know. It doesn't because feel... They're, the, the way they look, the way they present themselves, it just they don't look like they've ever been touched by something so bad. Mm -hmm. So, Anne, I don't know if that answers your question. I hope it does. Um, I go with what I feel, and I try not to pay attention to what I see. And I also want to know, it kind of hits comment for me to cut it off, but um, Druid Craft Tarot cards, and she also heard that there were some negative tarot cards that you shouldn't use them. There can be negative cards. Um, most cards do have a positive and a negative reading. There are some that don't, like we talked about. Um, some people are better at working with negative energy than others mm -hmm. are, and they might really be drawn to those. So the biggest thing is really listen to what your gut is telling you about the cards you're choosing for you. Some people do respond and can process negative so much better. And Druid cards, they're pretty much tarot card, just a different, um, a different face on the same book. Yeah, uh, different images. Yeah. <clears throat> it comes down to with the different card decks is that you can call them oracle cards, you can call them tarot cards, you can call them druid cards, you can call them whatever kind of cards you want. But it's just different names for the same thing. And they all serve the same purpose. They all share similar spreads, similar meanings. It's just calling a spade a shovel at a certain point. But, um, Another comment about that, too, is that some people may call cards negative because they had a negative experience with them, or they may have a negative association with a certain type of card. And just because that person um, associates that card or those particular set of cards with a negative thing doesn't necessarily mean that they will be a negative experience for you. So what I would recommend is it goes back to finding a set of cards that you connect with. And if you feel that you have cards that are negative to you, don't use them. Find a card or set of cards that you connect with. Exactly. I couldn't have put it better. All right. So people, I would just like to take a small pause because none of our phones are, it says 16 comments, but I'm not seeing 16 comments. So I'm just wondering if we can look at this for a minute and see if we can find a way. I don't want to leave anybody's questions unanswered. Okay. So um, can we minimize this story? Uh, would it be better if you seen the screen and I looked over at that? Sure. This way it can give you a chance to... Um... I'm just going to move my phone. So, some people are meant to be readers, some people are meant to be read, and it's an unfortunate truth that not everybody who has the want to read cards can have a really good connection with reading cards. Uh, some people, you know, just need to be the ones to be read. Um, <clears throat> You can learn the technical aspect of it, you can go through the book, you can learn every layout, you can learn what every card means, but they just have to find a way of speaking to you. And um, 
for preparing for a reading, if you've never been read before, be prepared for a truly gifted reader to see you. They will, and you might not be comfortable with the knowledge that they can see with what they do learn from you. And that's the unfortunate part that can sometimes make the experience an unpleasant thing for people. They weren't prepared for what they are ready to see. And of course, some readings don't have um, very good outcomes. And if people aren't prepared for that, like most people who come, they come because they have a question. They want to know something, you know, like, am I going to get my job? Um, am I going to get married? Am I going to have a baby soon? So it's got, kind of goes down to the old saying, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. It just might be seen and it might be not the answer that you want in a reading. So we're still, oh, there we go, we can see some comments now. Sorry, I'm nosy. Okay, yeah. Again, we're really sorry for this, everybody. We want to bring you the best show we can, um, but this is a learning experience for us. Crystal says, you guys rock. Thank you, Crystal, we love you. And Lauren said, thank you for sharing your gifts, gift, guys. Jacqueline said, hi. Carol Lennon said, hi, Carrie. Those are the stars, so the newest ones we have to Love you. Love you. Hey, Carol. Hey, Anne. And you're wonderful. We love you. And, um, you know, you can always come to the community nights and just come in and talk. I'm always willing to answer questions in person. If people want to practice their own spreads and try and connect with their cards, come in. I am never going to hoard what I do know. And I'm always more than willing to share with everybody. Edna Campbell Lyons wants to know how often can a person get a reading, like once every six months or what? You can be read as often as you want to be read. Sometimes if you get read closely together, there's not going to be a lot of change. Sometimes your life is in constant upheaval mm. and every day it's changing. Go ahead, sir. One thing that I have experienced in the past is where I've done readings before is by having that reading, it could potentially change the outcome of the event because you are now aware of it. Exactly. There have been times where I've done readings for myself, and they'll tell me one outcome, and they'll do the reading again, and the reading will basically say it's like a change in past events is now leading to a new outcome. Yep. And that totally... Sorry to drop my tourmaline. I'm really nervous for tonight. So I got my tourmaline closed for false courage or calmness. Um... You're totally correct on that. Uh, forewarned is forearmed. Mm -hmm. Now we know where all these old adages come from, don't we? But um, I've had another instance with a person that I read. Um, I've seen something bad, mm -hmm. and I tried to warn them for their spouse, and it wasn't pleasant at all. Mm -hmm. And this person, I asked him, I was like, are you sure you want to know what I see? Mm -hmm. And this person said yes. And... Um, I told them what I saw, and uh, later on, when it came to be, mm -hmm. sorry, I keep confidentiality, I'm trying to give you an experience with no information that can identify this person. Yes. Anyways, um, when it came to be, this person came to me later, and they're like, you know, thank you. Yeah. Because of this, I was prepared, and I didn't lose it. Mm -hmm. I was able to keep it together because I was, I was expecting it. Yeah. And then I was able to be strong for my spouse in a way that they needed me to be. And it got to be on getting them through it because I had time to deal with it er earlier. Mm -hmm. And in that way, it can be a wonderful thing when something negative comes up. But other people don't want to see it. It's too hard yeah. for them to see it. <laughs> so apparently Ash is laughing over something. Um. Well, Anne Lawrence commented again. She said, I believe some people just have so much chaos on going on. It's hard to have readings, I expect. But she also said, don't be nervous. We love this. Oh, I'm You're so, so glad. Sweet. I love you, Anne. Do you know, you guys are the most wonderful people in the world. I, I'm sorry. I have mm -hmm. to take it off topic for a it's minute. Okay. It's perfectly fine. Ever since I came up with the idea for this store, people have been so amazingly supportive. You are a fantastic community, and I am proud and glad to know each and every one of you. You bring joy to my life every single day. And even if we don't talk, I am thinking of you, and I am wish wishing you all the best. I am wishing you light and love and happiness. And just, you guys are so fantastic. Just really great people. 
since you started here, what do you think of the people you've been meeting? I have to say I've met some really wonderful people since I started here, and honestly, I've made some people I would consider my friends yeah. by just staying here in the store and getting to know people. And it is an experience that I am very glad I was able to have, and I do not in any way whatsoever regret coming into the store the first time. Oh, I'm so glad. I mean, you, I met through the store too, and now mm -hmm. look at us do on the show every week. So next, we, oh, we got another question. Um, Edna, sorry, mum fault, mum mum. She commented again, and she want, wants to know what the hours again are at the shop, and the prices are they are they the same price? And you're doing great, relax, and you're gonna be. Are you going to be live every week? Yes, we. This is our big. Surprise and a yep. way to give back to the group. We, we understand yeah. that not everybody can get out to the store as often mm -hmm. as they'd like. If they can't get out to the community groups, everybody has schedules and very busy lives. We so, also understand that because of people's schedules that our hours might not be convenient for everyone. We do. So that is something that we all are also talking back and forth with, trying to figure out a more permanent hour schedule so that we can try to work around everyone. But um, what we are currently working on doing is we're trying to secure uh, community room so that we can have our in-person community nights bi-weekly in here in Stellarton. It, it, it's really great to sometimes yeah. have that personal connection where yeah. you can interact with other people. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out that you don't always have to watch the show live. You will be able to bring it up at mm -hmm. any time. So this is a way we can give everybody the community nights on their schedule. Right. And that also comes back to if we do discuss something that you really enjoyed or something you may want to reference back to in the future, it would just be a matter of just going back and finding the video on our Facebook and watching through it again. Yeah. So for the store hours, which is what I think you're asking, Edna, they are going to be Monday to Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Thursday and Friday, they're going to be 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And on Saturdays, we're going to do 1 to 4. So we're trying to... It's It's been hard figuring out what hours best serve people. Yeah. So these are going to be our hours. They're not going to change anymore. Mm -hmm. And we hope we just make it more accessible to you. Now, I think there's some more comments happening. Another there. thing Actually, that no. we are... Um want to mention is that you mentioned are we going to be going live every week oh, yeah. uh we are going to be going live every week this is going to be our first podcast and we're mainly focusing on tarot but we do have more topics that we are considering for the next four to five weeks but if anyone has topics that they would like to see discussed or would like to even guest star in you are more than welcome to either comment or message us on facebook or even come into the store and talk to oh, us we are very. We are very. We are more than happy to have people come in and ask any questions about the live stream. We, or... I'm going to interrupt your story. We had a question. Um, hey Terry, uh, you don't have to wrap your cards in silk. You can wrap them in velvet. You can keep them in a wooden box. Uh, just whatever feels right to you. The only thing I would recommend not using to wrap your cards in would be synthetic fibers, just polyester. Yes. You want you natural. You want to keep it to a natural fiber. I totally agree with you there, Stork. A natural, natural's organic. Okay. It was once some yeah. it, like silk comes from silkworm. Silkworms are a living mm -hmm. creature. Cotton comes from a plant that lives and breathes. And mm -hmm. this helps keep energy to your cards. Yes. I will mention that I do keep my cards, the, or the cards that I have right now, I do keep them in a polyester bag. But that is not where I primarily store them. I primarily store them with my crystals in a wooden drawer with all my incense, and I use that to charge my cards. But I also believe these are cards you don't usually use for reading. That's no. more of a... Um, oh my gosh, the word's totally blanking on me. Showpiece. Uh, no, uh, an emotional connection. They were someone that you cared for greatly? Yes, they were They were my mother's cars and she passed them on to me. Uh, what is that word? It starts with an S. Sentimental? Sentimental. There we go, yes. You have a sentimental connection. 
And were there not a card that you're activating the energy on a regular thing, you know, it, it would be all right to keep them in a polyester mm -hmm. container. Like, but if you want to use your cards, you want to keep the energy good, keep it natural. Like normally I keep mine in a, a wooden box with a piece of crystal clear quartz placed on top yeah. of it. And then I'll put some sage in with it too. Exactly. Another thing too is that you could keep your cards wrapped in silk when you're not using them, but if you're going out and about and you want to have something that you can more easily transportate them in, then you could put them in your polyester and use that for your easy storage. Yeah, you could. So, um, another thing, yes, we are going to do the podcast weekly. Um, we're going to have different speakers, we're going to have different guests, we're going to have different background people. Uh, just to keep it more lively and always changing and always interesting. Next week, um, we're not quite sure what the topic it's going to be, but I do know one of these weeks soon we are going to be covering therapeutic touch. Mm -hmm. I've asked Cherry Whitaker if she wants to be our guest speaker for that, and she said she'd enjoy doing that. And we were also talking about covering meditation mm -hmm. and. Uh, having Stuart have his night where he's the primary on it and he's going to talk about his rooms mm -hmm. and we we're also talking about having Jennifer Whitelight do auras so we'd also love to know what you want to see these podcasts on so come into the store and tell us comment on Facebook message, message us, on us Facebook. whatever way just let us know what you want to talk about and let us know if you want to be on the show someday right um, like I mentioned, we are more than happy that if you do want to come in and lead a session about a certain topic, we'd be more than happy to have anyone in as a guest star. You just need to come in and talk to us and arrange us. Anytime. So, and I think there was a question about prices. Yep, um, we try to keep the prices the same, and um, we try to keep it affordable. I'm lucky here. I'm so lucky here that my overhead is very low. Mm -hmm. And we try to keep it as local as possible. Yes. We have so many wonderful local artists here. And I just personally find there's more of a connection when it's a product made in the area mm -hmm. by people you know. I would say, what, maybe half of what we have in the store right now? Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less? But about, yeah. I would say about half of what we have in the store right now is either made by a local artist or from a local artist. Definitely. And, and I will shamelessly self promote. We are getting an order in next week, people, so there'll be lots of new things for you to look at. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to address is that even with the readings that we do offer, we try to keep the prices the same. We try to negotiate with the readers. It's $25 for a tarot reading. It is for as long as it takes. For as long as it takes. It is $25 for a rune reading, which is also as long as it takes. And it's a little bit more for an aura Seven. reading because it does involve an aura and a card reading. So and they're at 30 and it's 15 for a palm. We are also possibly looking into finding other readers or offering oh, other yes. services. Yes. So you can always just comment or come into the store and find out what we're offering at the time. And when we do find other services, we will be letting people know <gasps> when that happens. So Ashley, you had a question? Um, and Lawrence wants to know if we will be giving out sample readings sometime. Sample readings. That's a, a something, and to talk about. When I do a reading, afterwards, I'm starving. Yeah. I need to fuel back up. Personally, in the hours that we keep at the store, I find six is my maximum where I'm not too drained. Six readings per day, like six people. Sample readings can be a bit of a difficult thing. But since, you know, you're one of my favorite people, you could pop on by and maybe we do a daily spread. I have offered rune readings for free to people, but I try to keep it to close people that I know, personal friends, family members. Um, if someone is interested, I might do a pick reading, which is just picking five or six runes out of my box to answer a certain question. But I wouldn't offer a full picking session for free, which would be between five to six questions. Yeah. It does cost us. Yeah. And that's another thing, too, is it's not just um, the time that it takes for the reading, but there's also is the mental... The energy draw. And yeah. It does drain you because you aren't just applying yourself physically, but mentally and spiritually. And emotionally. Yeah. My husband, he gets mad if I do more than six readings a day. 
Because I'm I'm just dragging my arse, sorry. Yeah. For the language. I'm Another... just dragging, I'm exhausted, and I need to eat. I eat so much. I, and express the more in-depth the reading is, mm -hmm. the hungrier I am. You've seen it today. Yeah. It was like stuffing my face because... I've also had interest before where I've offered simple readings to people, so like maybe picked out or did a simple picking for them, and it gave a really vague answer to something that would be coming up and be a really bad thing for them, and it's like, I can't just leave it at that kind of thing. So that's another reason that I personally don't like to do like sample readings, because I have had that experience in the past where it's like alluding to something that they need to know about or should know about that would just can't be left with just a slight answer. Yeah. So, sorry if the answer is negative and sad, but... Edna, same one who mentioned earlier, once said, maybe have liked and share a draw in times for a reading. We're more than, like, we can give readings as prizes, and we actually We did. have done. We have had a Facebook yes. like and share draw for free. Mm -hmm. No, it was a $20 gift card. Yes. Um, at our grand opening, actually, we had five yes, we did. Uh, readings given away as... We also had for the silent auction prizes. a free tarot and palm reading. Yes, yes. we did. There was yes. two for so we reading. do give away palm readings for free. It's just... And tarot. And yeah. tarot. Because in... For the people who missed the grand opening, we had a deck of playing cards. I'm actually going to get it because I thought it was a brilliant, funny idea. Uh... Where's that? There's a box of cards here. Um, well, Mom's looking for that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Edna said, if I went to the store, I will pay. Your gifts are worthy to all. was wondering about online samples. And she also said, oh, I'm so understanding, guys, XOXO. And Edna said she's sorry that she missed it. Oh, no worries, honey. But we, uh, because of the connection to playing cards, one of our things was every time you made a purchase, you got to draw a card. And in the cards, there was five. Stort was given away two free room two readings. free room readings, and I gave away two free tarot readings and one free palm reading. We also had one card which we called the dealer's choice, and if you got that card, you could choose between either ta um, palm, tarot, or room. Yeah. But um, ca uh, going back to your question about um, online samples, I know personally that I used to do online readings. But there wasn't that much of a connection, plus it's a lot easier to do a reading for someone if they are in front of you, because if they are, it goes back to tarot cards, if they touch the readings, it gives you a better reading. Yeah. And you were mentioning before that Yula don't like to I do, can't. right, because of the same reason, I you need to have need that connection. the connection. As everybody who's been read by me knows, that when I read your cards, when you're passing me the path that you choose, then I touch your hand slightly. I in order to get the best access to the information that's in your cards, I need to touch you. I know it sounds creepy and pretty, and every time I say that, I think, Joan Jett, when I think about you, I touch myself. <laughs> but I'm not that pervy, I promise. Just a little bit. Uh, okay, well, besides Mom being a weirdo, Edna says, your prizes are great anyways, and Anne said, will you do live e-transfer readings for those who can't get out at so? Live e -transfer. I wish, Anne, I really wish I was able to do readings without physically interacting with people. One thing I do do is I will go to you after hours and do a reading. That's, but I need the connection. That's just the way I work. So um, that is always an option. I will go to the person, mm -hmm. but if it's really, really far away, then I will have to take a little bit more for gas, but if it's in the five, not picked up, if it's in Stellarton, Trenton, Westfall, or De Blasco, I, I can go do the reading at your place. I personally don't offer readings online anymore because I had had issues with people scamming me in the past. I'm not implying that you would scam me, but after it's happened to you once or twice, then you do have that trust issue, and that's why I stopped offering my readings online. Yes. So, sorry, but I will come to people. That's all the comments we have right now. All right, so what time? It's 10 to 8. Oh, it's 10 to 8? My gosh, that went fast. It did. I was so nervous that I was ready. My stomach was so upset, and here the time just flew on by. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So I guess, folks, we're going to get ready to say goodnight, but when we confirm 
what next week's topic is going to be because we're floating around so many ideas and plus we'd love your feedback we would love to hear what you want us to talk about so um, when we know we will definitely announce it on our Facebook page mm -hmm. and we'll probably do another little live commercial oh we've got someone um, Anne said yes yes want to set up a family reading for me my sister's mom and I will have a great meal to celebrate after XOXO you cut you call me or commit a senior just whatever you let me know when you want to set it up and we'll work something out in and Mama Sue Martin, she called me. Good job, guys! Exclamation point, smiley face. I love you, Sue. Oh, we love you, Sue. <laughs> so right now, Sue Martin, the date that we are currently looking to have our next live stream is going to be next Wednesday, I believe, and it'll be around the same time or potentially earlier. We're still trying to. We're still up in the air about that as well. I, I like seven o'clock because okay. that gives people time to get home from work. It yeah. gives people. Time it also to gives us a bit if we are going to be doing our Wednesdays because we'll, we will be closing on Wednesday. Wednesdays at 5 will yeah. give us more time to set up and be prepared and we'll find out any glitches. And maybe eat something besides McDonald's with a car broke down the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. What is that guy? So, the drama. We were here all day long and we sent my son to get us supper at McDonald's. Yay. Yay. Great choices. And um, his car broke down. We think it's the alternator. So, he his car is stranded. I think it's A and M. M and E. It's wash. it's the car wash right beside McCullough's trucks, and we want to give a huge shout out to him because you were really awesome and you rocked with letting us leave up the car there for the night. So thank you so much. Kindness never goes unnoticed. Thank you to the car wash beside McCullough's. We love you. Thank you, car, well, wash, car wash. One more thing that I would like to mention before we end the stream is that we do. Um, are currently working in setting up a Patreon site as well as donations, and um, we will hopefully have that open. For... I'm going to cut into that for a second. Okay. We know our our computer and our camera and our sound is not the best, and we are dedicated to bringing you the best show. Just one second, Ashley. So, if you want to help support us in making this show better, making the video feed better, uh, the sound, everything. Stuart's handling that, setting up a donation site where you can contribute. You don't have to contribute much, and we are looking at rewards. Yes. And we're hoping to have that set up for next week, but if not, we will keep people posted on when we do have that figured out. Yeah. So, um, we are looking for prizes. So, Ashley has something she wants to say. Okay. And Lauren said, love, like to all XO, Topanga, shout out to you, girl, love you. Said, awesome job, guys, heart, heart. And Edna wants, as a question for Stuart, wants to know, how long have you been reading cards? My mother started teaching me how to read tarot cards when I was about eight or nine years old. And I used the cards until I was about 13 or 14. But I haven't really used them since. I mostly use runestones now. I have a question for Stuart because I never actually asked him this before. Mm -hmm. How long have you been reading runestones? I have been reading runestones since I was about 18, so that'd be about 15 years. Huh. So, Topanga, Stuart, Edna, and you guys are fantastic. There's probably way more people, but we love you all. And just remember, you just come in to see us, just come in to talk. We like friends. We like community. Another thing is that the space that we are using for broadcasting is right now is usually open. And we don't usually have our bus sitting here for most of the day. But if people do want to come to the store and just sit down and chat, you're always more than welcome to just sit down, chat, ask questions, and just the team have healthy. discussion. Another thing that we are looking into doing soon in the future. We, we noticed that the store has really become... A meeting point. Uh, a meeting vocal. point for people. A lot of people come to talk, to connect with people, to share ideas, to ask mm -hmm. questions. And uh, so we're looking at bringing in tea and coffee. And you're you're just always welcome here all the time. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Jumped in there on you. So if anyone has any questions, you can either message us on Facebook or comment on this video. Yes. And... And Edna both commented again. Love how much you guys are commenting. It's awesome, by the way. And said, um, just we'll be looking forward to seeing you all every week. Edna said, what is that? Stuart that he reads. Never heard that before. Should we show runestones? It can't hurt. All right. And so Laurie Goodwin, Goodwin Chapman also said, interesting info. Thanks. Sorry, this camera's going to be disturbed. I'm trying to get some runes out for you. So people can see, we have a couple different 
styles here and actually Stuart creates certain rune stones. He's also one of our consignments and I'm going to let you show people these. Okay, so I'm not sure how good you can see these, but these are the runes that I make personally. No, the camera's all wonky. That's the delayed view that we're looking oh, at. Oh, okay. So. Sorry. Or is it? Is that no, the I just delay sat down or again. is that the live? I just sat down again. Okay. That's delayed. So, these are the rune stones that I personally use and make. I use dice as opposed to what most people use, which is stones. I can explain that better on my night about the difference between stones and runes. Maybe next week we should just have you, unless Cherry wants to do next week. Okay. And these over here are another set of rune stones so that we have. Homemade as well. And these are homemade as well, and they are made using river rocks. Local. And there's a little book mm -hmm. with the meaning of each rune. Yes, yeah. So runes is a topic that we are going to be discussing. I don't want to talk about it too much tonight because it is something that we're going to be covering more in depth another time. So I guess, folks, that is it for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed this as much as fun as much as we enjoyed talking. And doing I do it. have to say, this was a very good, a very enjoyable experience. It was, and I look forward to. Interacting with everyone next time. Yes. Can you interact with me to show me how to end it when it's over? Yes. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Light and love. love Take you. care of yourselves. Every have a have a nice night, everyone. I just pressed it. It was nice. Oh. Remember that was through my page. <laughs>